Hi, we're here at the Home Show. I know I'm not Rob. I'm here to answer your questions with uh, your heat and air needs. Uh, Rob is busy talking with the customer right now, but I'm here to answer any of your questions. What is the most common problem right now that you see when you're servicing furnaces? So the problems we got right now, being the time of year, it's later in the year. Um, what we see right now is a lot of dirty, dirty filters and dirty flame sensors. Um, changing your filter regularly or having it, at least having it maintenance regularly helps prevent dirty flame sensors, but being that it probably ran all season and now you're probably experiencing nothing, maybe not heating right, a little chillier, it's because it's not running all the time, that's going to be due to a um, dirty flame sensor. Um, but again, check your filters regularly, those should be checked monthly. Um, they might not be super dirty, take it out, look at it, if you can still see like it's got white and not gray, then go ahead, slide it back in. Go about another 30 days to check it out and then see if you need to be replaced. Some filters are up to three months. They're up to three months. So that they're not right at three months. Um, any other questions? Um, are there things I need to listen for or check when my furnace isn't working before I call an HVAC professional? Um, the best things to check is just to make sure that the breaker's on to it, Possibly if it has a 110 switch, make sure that switch didn't get turned off. Sometimes if you have kids under the age of six, they tend to walk into your room and or to walk in, and turn the switch off to the furnace. So make sure those types of things are on. Again, always check your filter. That's a lot of the big thing. Check your filter. Um, that's uh, if you're calling HVAC coming because your system working. A lot of times it's because of the filter. I mean, but if you're smelling smoke or if you're smelling something, it's could be something it, that then you're talking more but a lot of times it's going to be your filter a lot of times is there any reason that a furnace would have a smell uh, you know that would be normal compared to what i should be worried about uh, i mean if you're smelling like electrical smells or anything like that that's probably something to do with the motor or something like that something on on that type of side that material you shouldn't really be smelling anything come out of your come out of your hvac system Except at the beginning when you first turn Except for, yeah, at the beginning of the season. Yeah, that should be the last time you, you smell something, but only the beginning. So, um, what happens if I change the air filter and then all of a sudden my uh, furnace isn't working? Um, that could be a couple of that could be a couple of different things. Um, did, how did you change your filter? Did you take the bottom door off your filter? Did you... Um, that could be a couple, again, again, go back to we're starting, go make sure the breaker's on, go make sure you have your thermostats on, those types of things, or make sure you put the door on, get it, get it on nice and tight. So if the door's not on, it won't run? Yes, if the bottom door's not on, um, you, your furnace won't run. That There's a safety switch inside the cabinet, and if that switch is not depressed in, which means the door's not on tight, your furnace won't power up. Brand new one. So, um, you know, if I want a new furnace, can you just quote me a price over the phone? Um, we, I don't like, we don't like giving out ballpark prices. Uh, we really like coming out to do a load calculation on your house and kind of go through it to make sure we're going to give you, to make you the most comfortable in your house. Um, you know, given just, anybody can give you a quote, it's better to get some eyes on it than to just get something over the phone. So what are some things that you are looking at to do a load calculation? We got to look at your, we look at through your windows, look at your insulation, we look at the type of insulation, the type of install it was originally, um, make sure your duct works good. Um, we, we just do a quick load down to make sure that we're putting the right size in your house. Because if it's 15 or 20 years old, you could have a furnace that's two times bigger than what you actually need for a house in today's, in, at today's age. Air filter. Right? We're talking about air filters. Um, uh, what type of air filter does it matter? What kind of air filter I use? Um, it does, but it doesn't matter. I mean, I don't recommend using a fifty cents to a dollar filter, um, but I also don't recommend using a filled treats twenty uh, twenty Merv rating high hypogenic filter. Um, Sticking with the just sticking with the general Merv 11, 
Merv 12, one inch pleated filter. That's going to do what it needs to do and filter your house. Um, going with those high allergen filters only causes more problems with your furnace, um, causing high, um, high static, which will cause less airflow. Um, they load up quicker, so you're changing that filter more often, even though it says it can go for six months or a year. You might get a month out of those types of filters. Sticking with your standard regular 11, 10 to 12 mer filter, you're gonna, you won't have the fishy problems. It's gonna filter just right. If you're interested into more IAQ products, um, that's indoor air quality. We sell an electronic air cleaner. We actually can clean your air um, at uh, at 98.7%, uh, and we can up to 98.7%. We can clean your air. air. Um, but like I said, sticking with a standard one-inch fil pleated filter, that's that's what I recommend. Was that Merv rating again? The, Mer the Merv rating is just going to be your what it's what kind of par particulates it's going to filter down to. So the lower the Merv, which is that's going to be what we call boulder catchers, things you can see through. You got big, they got big holes in them. A Mer so the Merv is just going to take care of your, um, you know, your higher allergens, your dog hair, those types of those pollens, those types of things. That's what your Merv rating is. So it's going to be cleaner and better air if I have a higher MERV rate. So yeah, the higher the more, the better the cleaner air. But like I said, the 20, the, anything above 12 is only going to cause restriction in the airflow and will um, will hinder your system. Then it will be do good for your system. Okay, well, yeah, still staying on the filter thing. So um, what is the filter that's good for taking um, dead skin? Uh, in the air and uh, dust my bodies in the air. Yeah. I mean, because I don't want to breathe that in. So what? What's the good filter for that? Well, again, there's. You, I the only way to do that is to go with a, an air cleaner, um, not an air filter. Again, we it's if you're wearing something like that, we need to clean the air and not filter the air. So the best thing to do is call call Air Source and we can get you set up on a electronic air cleaner. And that will help you with those types of dead skins, mold spores, um, those those other types of allergens out there. So, do you um, change that uh, an electronic air filter? Do you change that as often as you do a regular? Um, well, we recommend that if you saw one, we recommend you run it for about two weeks on on, uh, and then we recommend checking it. Um, you might go through your first couple filters quicker, but once you get it done, they'll go for the full three months. So they're about three, they're, they are truly three month filters. Well, I'm an allergy sufferer, so um, you would say, which filter is the best for me? Uh, the best filter for you, if you just wanna, don't want to go with the, electron, the air cleaner is, again, I would stick with the round, um, the one inch Merv rating of 12, that's the best thing you can go with. Um, unless your system's set up with more of a, an air bear, but an air bear, all the difference between an air bear, a five inch air bear and a one inch regular Merv filter is that it takes longer for it to load up. That's the difference. So an air bear you might get the actual three months out of instead of the one inch that's up to three months. You're, but but, but again, allergy, allergy really sufferers, I can't, I cannot recommend going to a higher MERV rating and a standard one inch pleated filter. Again, it, it suffers, your system suffers, your system suffers. So the electronic air cleaner is where you're going to be at. That's going to be our, that's going to, you're always going to come back to electronic air cleaner. Is there anything else that you recommend to help clean the air? Well, if you... Again, there, we have other IAQ products out there, such as our um, our GPS system, which is cold plasma. Um, this will do. This is going to take care of more of your common colds and uh, normally more more of your sicknesses. If you do with this and electronic air cleaner, you'll get close to that hospital grade air. Um, I mean, you're still going to get sick, but you're going to get less sick. So if you're normally getting sick. I know eight times during the winter, you know, you're going to cut that down to probably about three to four times during the winter. I mean, that's huge when it comes to, you know, paychecks and money. Saves you money, so. Um, I do have a, a question from Levi. Um, 
He's asking, are you guys hiring? Uh, we're not hiring at the moment, um, but it's always good to put in your, um, actually we are looking for a sales guy. Um, our sales guys though, um, so if you are interested in being a salesperson, um, you know, go ahead. Uh, right now we're not looking for any technicians, but we are looking for a sales guy. I did, did forget about that. All right. Um, so what is that thing that helps take the static electricity out of the air? Um, a humidifier. Is that? Okay. So a humidifier. You're actually coming to the end of the season now where we don't, you're not going to be using the humidifier as much. Your furnace isn't running as nearly as what it was. Um, those are only really good for the summer or the winter time um, to keep the humidity in the air. Those are, you know, if you're feeling like you get off your couch, you take a jacket off, you're feeling the static going on, you need a humidifier. For temporary, you should boil some water. That'll get you by. Um, you know, that'll settle some of that down if you've got really, really high static in your house and your furnace is running longer. Um, but this time of year, your furnace isn't as running as nearly as it was two weeks ago. So, um, but again, a humidifier, I recommend a humidifier if you are feeling that dry skin, itchy skin, you know, bloody noses, those types of things. If you're constantly having those, I do recommend getting a humidifier. But again, to get you by, throw, throw a big pot of boiling water on the stove and that'll make you feel better. So is that humidifier, is that something that takes, like if I'm gonna turn on the light switch, you know, and I get that shock? Yes, it's gonna take that type of things away. It takes, it, again, well, all what what feeling static electricity means you're dry the house is dry so you're so every time you go across the carpet you go across your hair you take your house is dry that static electricity comes from a dry house putting moisture into your house what you need that's what a humidifier does it puts moisture in so similar to an air conditioner but the difference is your air conditioner puts moisture with puts moisture in your house your furnace takes moisture out of the house so we got to add some back in because the furnace dries your house out again i recommend humidifier Give us a call, um, a low end humidifier we put in, around $500 installed. Um, you want to go with more of a powered humidifier, around 650 bucks. That'll get you all set up and ready to go. So, um, you know, I know that we, it's Kansas, so you don't know how long a winter is going to last and if it's going to snow in April or May or whatever. But um, when do you guys start cleaning the air conditioner? So our air conditioner cleaning starts we try to get them start getting scheduled come March, uh, about mid-March. Try to get out there about April. But if March says, hey, it's going to be 70 degrees in the end of March, we'll see you in March. But we'll try to start those first thing of April, and we would like to have you all serviced up and be done before the end of June. So that's where we try to there. So, But um, now's the time to start getting them scheduled. We get, um, now's the time to start getting them scheduled. We're running a home show price of one ten ninety nine. That covers six months of our service club membership, and uh, gives you and does give you your first cleaning. Our special, if we do if we, if we do run a special, um, is going to be ninety nine dollars, and that only covers the cleaning for the air conditioner. But right now, this weekend, if you do our home show special, it's one ten ninety nine, and again, that covers six months of our service club membership, and uh, so. That gives you all the discounts and the red carpet treatment. And so with that, um, what, what does that service club membership cover? So what the service club membership covers is we come out twice a year. We do a 23 point inspection on each of your systems, one for the furnace, uh, one for the AC. The furnace, we do, our, we do a camera check, we check all the small parts, we check your gas pressure, we, ch we change your filter with the GIN to our standard one inch pleated filter. We're not like the other guys out here. We don't use boulder catchers or 50 cent filters off the off the shelf. We actually use a one inch pleated filter. Um, on the air conditioner side, we have follow along with another two three point inspection. But in all of the point of the inspection, along checking your capacitors, your contactors, your motor. Uh, we take a, we disassemble your whole scent unit outside, spray it down, clean it with a chemical to get all the gut, the grime and the dirt off of it. We put it all back together and we fire it up to make sure you're in good bill of health. What we do is we try, what we do, if we do find something wrong that day, we ask that you take care of it. If you can, we'll actually stand behind our work and guarantee it for this season. Um, nobody out here else says that. That's what we stand behind. We got, well, we're gonna guarantee it. Um, as long as you, we, you fix the recommended parts, we took care of you. So does that service club membership, uh, what if something does go wrong and it's a Sunday? 
Uh, if it's a Sunday, what's great about the service of membership is there's there no overtime fees um, with that. It's just going to be your $40 diagnostic fee um, and we'll come out and take care of it for you. Um, the only thing the service club membership doesn't cover, unfortunately, is we cannot cover your motors, your we can't cover your motors and your capacitors um, when it falls under that. Unfortunately, motors and capacitors, they can check good one day and be bad the next. We can't. So, but what we can do is we at least give you a bill of health and if it's something that we can help you out, then we'll definitely take care of you because we strive in customer service. That's our number one goal. Um, Robin uh, Sagamon, she is watching you right now. And hi, Robin. Hello. And she says, how often should we service our HVAC unit to help make it last longer? You should definitely have it serviced, again, but twice a year. You need to have once for the spring coming up and then once again for the furnace after that. Um, that, that keeps you in good bill of health every year. Um, we live in Kansas. Um, you, I mean, we. If you live on a dirt road, you're definitely your furnace needs to be checked out every year. Um, you live, uh, you live out in Valley Center, Kansas. You have the worst population of uh, cottonwood ever. You definitely, and Kansas in general has a terrible cottonwood. So that you got to have it service. You, if it can't breathe, it's not doing you well. Your efficiencies go down. So you definitely got to, you got to breathe. Furnace got to breathe. So better efficiency means lower cost of my. Utility yes, lower utility bills, more peace of mind. Um, that's how we take care. That's how we take care of it. Again, to make sure that you're not worried about in the middle of summer, 110 degree days, if your air conditioner is going to break down. Um, okay, so uh, going back to a new unit, what kind of questions should I be asking when I'm looking to buy a new air conditioner? Um, some of the questions to ask is just to. I uh, honestly, I don't know what kind of questions I have to ask. <laughs> uh, so, so, um, like efficiency. What what is efficiency about? Uh, well, what's efficiency. Oh, uh, what's, what's well, rating? those are some what of the questions. Uh, a, a thirteen seer. That's going to be your standard where we're at now. Um, you know, we uh, higher efficiency is going to be around your fourteen, sixteen, and then you're going to be even higher around your 17 to 20. Those are going to be your SEER ratings. Um, those are just going to be based on what your savings are. Um, for a 13 SEER air conditioner, you know, you're only you're saving only about five to six dollars on a, on a heat and air equipment. So you're kind of on the low end. If you go to more of a 14 to 16 SEER air conditioner, you're going to be more close to that $15. Um, you're saving more around $15. So that's about 20%. So is there any other questions that I should be asking an HVAC professional when I'm looking for a, a, to buy a new air conditioner? Anything you got, Rob? Uh, okay. You know, the, the, main, the main thing that, uh, that you need to know about that is, listen, when it comes to HVAC, heating and air systems are all pretty much the same. As far as the equipment goes, they all have a 10-year parts warranty. They all have, they're all manufactured mostly right here in the United States. Uh, you don't have those issues. Really, the most important day of a heating and air system is the day it's installed. If it's installed correctly, it's going to give you what you need from that point on, and service-wise, it's going to be taken care of you from that point on. So, from there on, that's where you're at. Listen, why? it really does depend on the company that puts it in. If the company's doing it correctly, installing it correctly, and then keeping you and servicing you and keeping you going on that, You'll have, any piece of equipment, doesn't matter what brand it is, is going to service, service you for many years to come. So uh, what about a furnace? If I want a furnace, are there certain things I need to look at, question, when I'm looking for a new furnace? Well, furnace, furnace and air conditioners are very, very similar to the same thing, especially on a furnace. It's like buying a car. You know, what do you want all your bells and whistles to go with that car? Uh, you know, for our furnace, we, you start out at an 80% efficiency furnace, you go up to all the way up to a 95% efficiency furnace. It has different things as far as, you know, two stage, single stage, um, you know, variable speed, all kinds of different bells and whistles that comes with the furnace. So, you know, it really depends on what you're looking for and what you're trying to do with it. Uh, if you plan on being in that house for more than, you know, more than five years, then definitely looking for the more higher bell, bells and whistles and things like that definitely is what you want to look for in that situation. Um, you know, we're going to be coming up on the spring uh, season, and so a lot of times the power goes off because of a storm or, you know, what it, for whatever reason the power goes off. 
Um, is there any special steps I need to do if my air conditioner doesn't come on, back on when the power goes back on? So most of the, when it comes to something like that, you know, most of the time we tell people, very first thing is if you turn off, if you turn off the, uh, the, the unit uh, or the unit goes off on power and you've got a, any type of a digital thermostat, that digital thermostat has a built-in time delay into it. So that's going to wait for five minutes before it even turns back on. It doesn't matter at that point. If it doesn't come on the pin, then at that point, we always say, hey, look, make sure you go check your breaker. If it, because sometimes that breaker can trip because it turned on, turned right back off. Make sure you go take the 220 breaker. That's going to be the 30 or 40 amp breaker, um, the double one. Make sure you go turn it all the way off and all the way back on. A lot of times you'll look at it and go, it's, it's good, but really, one leg is tripped on it, so you want to make sure you turn it all the way off, all the way back on. Make sure that works there. Make sure the thermostat is telling it to come on. You want some of those types of things. At that point, if it doesn't come back on, then you're going to have to call a professional out to take a look at it. All right, so another question is, you know, a lot of people are talking about mini splits now. You know, that's the, the new thing. You know, I've, I've had my home for 20 years, and it's already got ductwork and everything. Is, is a mini split something I want to get? A mini split, really, when it comes to a mini split system, um, they're great for add-on type of equipment. They're great for doing, uh, if you're adding a room or if you have what I call a problem child room where, where a room is hot or cold or those types of things and you're always having problems with that. Uh, maybe an upstairs uh, system. If you got one system, you got two floors. Um, the second floor is never, it seems like it never is hot or it never is cold or it never, never correct. Those are great places for mini splits to look at and to go to. That being said, you're looking at replacing your system and uh, and then and then replacing and put it with a mini split then it becomes a different problem because you already have your ductwork you already have a lot of things it's going to get really could get really expensive putting in a mini split system for the whole house in that situation if you don't have anything maybe you've got a floor furnace or you've got a wall furnace and you're looking at putting heating and air system in and there that a mini split definitely is a place to look at first or as an option instead of a, co a conventional system. So that, you know, those are kind of things on the mini split uh, that you're looking for on there. Okay, so, um, you know, AirSource, how long have you guys been in business? So Air, AirSource started in 2000. We've been in business a little, almost 20 years now. And uh, so we've been, uh, we are veteran owned, we are woman owned, and we are minor minority owned. So uh, we've got a little bit of all those covered. Uh, We've, uh, we've got the, the side of, of, I don't know, the water. Uh, so when it comes to, so we've got the experience. We've got, you've got over, over 30, 40 years of experience in, the, in our industry uh, with a, between our technicians and, and uh, myself in the industry. So we're, we've got that covered on that side. So do you only work on heating and air? Is there something else to work on? Well, we have the indoor air quality. We work on uh, residential boilers, uh, light commercial boiler work. We do uh, heat pumps. Uh, you know, again, we talk about mini splits. We talk about geothermal. We've done a lot of geothermal today. We've had a lot mm -hmm. of questions on the geothermal systems today. Uh, we do work on geothermals. We install geothermal, so we're a part of that. So just keeping those things in mind on that side of it. So, um, do you just service the Wichita area? Uh, the area we service is we service a 25 mile radius of Wichita, uh, and we can go further. We go a little further out there, but we don't have a trip charge for anything within a 25 mile radius of Wichita, and then beyond that, uh, depending on where it is, we we can go there, but we may have a trip charge on there. So, uh, what if I want to check my own heating and air issue, um, and I have a question? Can I just call you? We do a lot of questions. People call us with some issues, minor issues. We try, if we can talk you through a little bit here, a little bit there, and get you going, then we're gonna, yeah, hey, I, I don't have a problem in talking to you, giving you some suggestions to tra check and try to get you running and going. But, you know, in, in the end, you know, it, it's possible. I can say, look, I, at this point, I've given you all the points I can give you, and I'm gonna, we're gonna have to send out a technician to take a look and see what's going on at that point. But we have no problem giving some advice on, you know, what, what you can check and make sure, you know, I'd hate to call, go out, send a technician out just to flip a switch. That's, uh, that's why I tell people, I'd rather you, you go out and try to flip that switch and to get it to run and save you a little bit of money on that. 
All right, just one more question. So um, we talked about club membership and how much it would cost if uh, I had a problem on a Sunday, you know, or a diagnosis, but, and then it'll be plus repair. Um, what if I'm not a club member? How much would it cost me? So uh, if you're not a non-club member, you know, our diagnostic charge normally is 75 during the business hour. It's $90 on after hours or on weekends and holidays. Plus, then you would also have whatever is wrong with the system. So at that point, so um, if you're a club member, then you have you have no we have no overtime on that. You don't have and uh, and the diagnostic charge is only forty dollars uh, for the service for that for a service call on that part of it. So and then you're going to get a twenty percent discount on any uh, on anything that's going with the uh, as far as. Anything repairs. wrong, repairs, thank you. Any repairs or those types of things, if you have anything like that, you're gonna get a 20% discount on top of that. So we have no overtime charge and you get priority. So we have a priority on top of that. All right, well, thank you so much for all that information and thank you for the questions you guys had. Um, hi, Austin and Andrew and Wayne, hi. And Leslie. Hello. Hey, Hello. Austin, Leslie. Awesome, thank you hi, for guys. tuning thank in. You. Thank you so much for watching. And, you know, if you have questions, you can message us here on Facebook. You can give us a call, 316-869-0198. Um, um, but we are glad to help you. Uh, we love helping people. And that's who we are here at AirSource. Right. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.